All right, cage side seat here at Media Day UFC 229 in Vegas and Showtime. You really don't even have to say it when you look at him. It's Anthony Pettis, the former lightweight champion of the world, co-main event against the former interim champ who they stripped without him losing the belt, El Kukui, Tony Ferguson, who a lot of people argue might be better than the two fighters who are in the main event, and a golden opportunity for you to have another chance to get that belt back, which I know you've been thinking about for a long time. Yeah, you know what? This is a great fight for me. Um, I'm kind of I'm, I'm over trying to chase that belt. You know, whatever happens after this fight, it will happen. I'm not, it's not in my control. I, my, my control what happens Saturday night. I go out there, I get the job done. I had a great training camp. I feel confident. I feel I feel just ready, man. I feel mentally this is the best I've ever felt. You know, I just feel I just feel in a good place. And it, it's, when I'm in a good place, I fight dangerous. Yeah, no kidding. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, obviously, I think the primary thing is your mentality because we know how much that plays into whether you win or lose. And you went through a rough stretch. You had the issues with your cars at home that you were dealing with in the middle of a camp. And then you had the weight cut where you said, hey, I'm going to move divisions. And I just wonder how much of it got in your head after you lost that belt and you were just kind of maybe, I don't want to say aimless, but kind of like trying to find your way back to where you are now. I was reckless. That's what it was. It was a reckless way of trying to become a world champion and not really thinking of what I'm doing to my body cutting 10 pounds like that you know I did it once and I knew it was hard and I'm like oh, I'll do it again and, and it, it wasn't the right decision you know, I, I, that, that shouldn't have happened I shouldn't have cut down to 45 um, the second time that quick um, but they, they offered me a title shot who's gonna say no to that I, I, I live and I learn I've learned from that mistakes and I'm, I'm back in a comfortable spot I'm comfortable where I'm at I love where I'm at um, it's gonna be exciting the underdog again and, and I, I love it how are you able to get to this place mentally from where you were I don't know, man. It's been a long process. I think life outside the Octagon has definitely changed, but uh, just training, bro. I'm dropping my training partners like I've done in the past effortlessly. I'm, I'm getting submissions on. I'm not forcing the, the things that I've, I did effortlessly before. It's coming back effortless again, and it just feels like I'm having fun training. You guys are pretty similar on the feet. I'd give you the edge in striking, maybe hit, obviously him the edge on the ground, but your jiu-jitsu is good as well. How do you see this fight shaping up? What do you think he's going to try to do against you? We know he's aggressive, and you like to throw hands and feet, so it should be a great matchup. Yeah, I don't think he has the, the uh, advantage on the ground at all. I think my ground game is underrated. No one's, I've, anybody who's good at jiu-jitsu who's had me on the ground, not even close to a submission. I've walked through guys' guards. Oliveira, I walked through his guard. He had my back, I reversed him. You know, a guy like that, Oliveira, is supposed to be the best in the, the world, or the best in the UFC at, at uh, jiu-jitsu. I mean, I feel like my jiu-jitsu is underrated. A guy like him is gonna showcase that. Um, my striking is definitely years above his. I think he's definitely tough, but my striking, I have, way more tools in the belt than he does. So uh, it all depends how I want to attack this game. Do I want to make it a flashy traditional matchup? Do I want it to be rangy? Should I go fight him like a Mexican toe to toe? I mean, however I want to do this, it's up to me. Anthony Showtime Pettis here at Media Day. And you know, when you look at being on this card, nickname Showtime, you love the spotlight, former champ looking to get that belt back. To be on a card that could do three million buys as the co-main, I mean, there's nothing better for your brand, your business, your image, and everything than that. Man, I'm just excited for Sunday. I know what I'm capable of. I know what's going to happen. I, I feel it. It's not even like... It's just, I just feel it's a different presence, bro. I'm just excited to get out there and do it. All right, you get the win this week. Let's say Poirier and Diaz out there as well, but, and you had that fight against Dustin, but do you feel like you get the win over Ferguson, you should get the winner of the main event on Saturday? I don't really care. If I don't get the winner of the main event, I want Eddie Alvarez, I want Edson Barboza, I want RDA, I want, I want everybody. He's on a mission just to beat dudes right now, not even with the belt as a main priority. Anthony Showtime Pettis, always great catching up with you, man. And just great to see you in this place because the best Showtime is a world-class champion fighter, and it's good to see you back at this level again. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, Anthony Pettis, the biggest names in the sport from the best seat in the house. It's Cage Side Seat.